Hey guys, uh, I'm going to show you how to actually create a, a standard a roof in SketchUp without actually using any plugins. It uh, Just stick with me guys and have a quick look. So essentially I'm going to create two roofs. I'm going to create uh, just a normal hip roof and a hip and valley roof. Okay, so so over here we have exactly the same size as, the, as these ones here. And what I'm going to do is, these might be your walls or whatever it is, I'm going to actually make them a group first. The reason being is I don't want my roof to stick to uh, my walls, so right click make group. Alright, and then what I need to do is figure out the pitch of the roof that I'm going to create. And I also need to know, you know, how it's going, is it going to have an eave overhang? So you'll notice these roofs here have an eave overhang and a gutter and so on. Right, so let's have a bit of a look. <clears throat> Okay, so the first thing to do is to discover what pitch the roof is going to be. And if we use the protractor tool uh, here, and we go in and we type in a, a pitch, I'm going to type in 22 degrees, enter. And now I have the line of a roof. There's a couple other things that I need to know. And usually we want to look at uh, the span of the roof. So you can see that this is called a ridge, and the span of the roof is here. So for us to create the roof, we need to know the half span. Now SketchUp automatically will snap to a half span there or a midpoint, right? And if I knew that measurement, you can see down the bottom it says 5877. So if I draw a line 5877, 5877, enter. <clears throat> Essentially, what I have is the half span. So the distance between here and here is the same. Let's have a look at that. Right. Now, because this is going to be a hip roof, I'm going to move this to the other side. So I push control and moved it over. And now I have uh, two half spans um, there, right? So if I actually went, right, join this, these lines up from here. One more here and I remove, I don't have to remove these. I basically now know the distance. So if I went say a tape measure, so tape measure tool, and I went to here, the distance from here to here is the distance that I'm going to lift my ridge. So you can see down the bottom there, 2377. So if I went dimension that, <clears throat> I'm using keyboard shortcut for dimension. So therefore, if I actually select this line here and use the move tool, which is M as a keyboard shortcut, move it up vertically, you'll notice that I actually am starting to get uh, a pitch, but I actually wanted this to come with me and I might have just broken that line there. So I'm gonna move that again, so move. And I'm going to go vertically up. So if you can't get vertically up on a blue axis, use your up arrow button. Right, and I'm going to bring it up until I get to the height of my roof there. And now you can see I kind of have, you know, the majority of a roof. So because I made this face a group before, there was nothing to tie this roof together uh, or create faces from edges. So I'm going to fill that in there. And I don't need these lines anymore. They're kind of just okay right so as you can see I've kind of got the inside skin of that roof now if I actually push pull this up let's just say push pull it up say 10 millimeters enter and then I double click 10 millimeters double click 10 millimeters oh, I've got a face there so line push P, double click. Right, now what I can do is I can actually use that geometry to have my overhang come out. All right, so I'm gonna type in 600 here, enter, double click, <clears throat> and double click, I think you get the idea. The double click is basically remembering the last move. You'll notice, because I broke that line or edge before, it actually drew a face there, uh, or finished where I push pulled it to. <clears throat> and now I have closer to what I'm going to need for a roof, right? You can see that I still need to bring these uh, lines through here. So if I actually grab that and move 
You'll notice it automatically wants to stick to an axis, but I would use my left or right arrow button accordingly and I would push shift when I got to where I need to go. Same here, grab the edge, move on red, shift, and to there. Right. I'm not going to go around and do the other sides because it's repetitious, but if I actually went here and <clears throat> chose move again, if I lift this up on the vertical axis, you'll notice that I'm actually going to start to get, so I'm going to type in 180 because that's a standard facial size here. And same here, move up 180. Right, and as you can see, what I'm starting to get there is a roof. Now I could also use the follow me tool to do that as well and I might just quickly show how to use the follow me tool uh, on this uh, next roof. Okay, so over here, I'm gonna do the same thing. I need to find my half span again. So there it is there. It's gonna divide it by two there. You can see this trying to get on the green axis, I want it on the blue. I'm gonna turn my mouse on so you can actually see what's going on here. <clears throat> right. So you can see what I'm doing to navigate around. I'm going to find my half span again. And I'm going to use my tape measure tool to draw that half span on there. I'm going to dimension the half span so I know the distance back. 36.75. So therefore I want to draw a line here or I could use the tape measure tool. 36.75. Enter. 36.75. And you can see I've got my other half span here. And the distance between here and here is 3 meters and 47. 3047, enter. <clears throat> right, and if I went and traced around, I'm going to achieve a very similar result. But what I can also do, now I have that 45 degree line there, is I can use my tape measure tool and I can draw it through there, and then that way I can see where my roof is starting to intersect. There. Of every external corner is going to be a 45 degree line. <clears throat> there, okay, so now you can see that this is where my hips would line up, and this is where my valley would actually become. Right, so, and, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm going to create another uh, vertical line up here. I'm going to come up into no man's land there, and I'm going to select this line here, and I'm going to use Q as a keyboard shortcut, which is rotate, and I'm going to rotate it up the pitch that I want it to be. So I'm going to type in 22, enter, and now I have the height of my roof. Join this line together here. Now, what I could also do <clears throat> is I could use my tape measure tool again and go up vertically, so up arrow, type in 180, which is the height. And now I could actually create an overhang in one go by going down to, say here, and type in a measurement if I want to. I'm just gonna eyeball it. Right, and essentially, if I can select this face on the top here, I'm gonna copy it. So I'm gonna go Control C. <clears throat> Let's quickly get rid of all of my excess geometry in here. Delete, delete. And I'm going to go Edit, Paste in place. All right, now. What I can do, I've actually drawn this the lowest pitch here, so I could actually move this one around. So I could grab this. <clears throat> You'll notice that all the faces are together there. It's probably not ideal, it's not what I want. I'm gonna grab this one here. I'm going to go move, control. And I'm gonna move it outside of my model for the moment. I'm going to rotate it, so Q, 90 degrees. And <clears throat> shift to here, and move this one along as well. Right, 
You'll notice that I'm a little bit shy of the, the vertical height that I required here. So I'm going to go up to my vertical here. And I'm just going to draw a line through. You notice that I got a crimson line there. Down 180. Here, enter. All right, and now I have a face. All right. <clears throat> so I can use the follow me tool to follow this around. Let's have a look. Let's see if I can get this in one go, guys. It's been a while since I've done this. So I always use a plugin to do this type of thing. There we go. Right, you'll notice here that, that these faces haven't broken. So for instance, I have this excess geometry. Now, the easiest way to get rid of it is simply to join these lines here. All right, and I have another one. I'm gonna join my valley line, essentially. Right, and now what I can do is you can see that I have a face there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the faces that I don't require. So I'm just gonna get this edge, delete, delete, delete. Now we can see where we're at. Don't need that, don't need that, that. I don't need this, I don't need that. And I'm gonna show you like a much quicker way in a second, guys. Bear with me. Okay. Righto. Now, all I need to do is tidy up a little bit, so erase. Now, I could also do the same thing with gutters off the side here. Uh, I could create cappings and everything from there. We can associate materials or anything that we need to and tidy up any edges. The main thing is, is that once you've created your roof, you go right click, make group or component, and that way your roof will then be independent. Right click, make group. All right. <clears throat> That's how to do a hip and valley roof. I'm going to show you a heaps quicker way. Right click, roof, create roof. Put in the pitch 20 to 22 degrees. Go submit. All right. 10 times quicker, and if you need to make an edit, you can edit these roofs, basically roof, add gable, yeah, and go submit. The plugin I'm using is Plus Spec or Plus Design Build will do the same thing. Hope it helps out, guys. Cheers.